Joining us now, former acting ICE director Ron Vitello. It looks like we've got the number. New government data and documents show the Biden administration released more than 62,000 immigrants who illegally crossed the U.S. border into the U.S., uh, despite the Biden administration's claims that most migrant families are not being taken into custody. So we're seeing 62,000 there without legal documents to appear in court. And we're also seeing, we're still fact-checking this number. This is unconfirmed. 60, another 62,000 came in for humanitarian reasons. So that's 120,000. What do you say? It's just another example of what, of this government, this president and his team sending a signal to the globe that the borders open. Uh, they inherited a system in which the, the, the tools that prevented and ended the last surge in 2019 those tools were on the table when they walked in the door, and they took them off the table, encouraging people to come, incentivizing children and, and families to send their children. And because of the COVID, because of the pandemic, Border Patrol was forced, you know, for, on the logistics side to release family and family members. And that all, and that's just going to encourage other people to make that dangerous journey. You know, this number is way, way higher than what was, than who, the number who was released under the Trump administration, right? Oh, yes. Yeah, no. The, the, when the, uh, when the migrant protection protocols went into effect, uh, people were expelled back into Mexico to wait for their asylum hearings. And th there wasn't, there wasn't a need to release large numbers uh, of, of families. And then the children under Title 42 were, in coordination with their home governments were being returned until January 21. So, by the way, the, the numbers do not include the tens of thousands of unaccompanied children who are also being discharged by, discharged by Health and Human Services. So, should Congress have hearings on this? Are they going to have hearings on this? Um, you know, because, again, there were 62,000 released into the U.S. Uh, communities and society without legal documents to appear in court later on. That's a lot of people. Again, that just shows you how chaotic it was for, for many weeks along the border. And to your point, Congress should engage on this, right? There, there, was, there was a situation where we were con we controlled the last surge. We, we ended it in 2019 with these tools. And, and Congress can come back in. Those were all, those were all agreements. That was, that was, a, that was diplomacy. Um, and foreign relations. And so Congress can come in and solidify that activity with law, right? So in the 2014 surge, it was true again in 2018, I was part of teams that went up with DHS to help give the Border Patrol the tools they needed uh, to stop these surges and, and keep them from happening again. And so Congress has a role to play here. And it seems like this administration isn't going to lift a finger to go back to the policies that they reversed uh, so Congress could make them. So it's really, you know, the Congress, the House and the Senate, they've got to get it done. Because what we're seeing is many, so what we're hearing is many are transported to these regional border patrol stations. They're booked into the system. Border patrol is so overwhelmed with drug traffickers and human traffickers that they book them into the system and then they get dropped off at a bus station because border patrol and U.S. authorities can't physically accommodate the very large and high number of people arriving. And they I mean they they don't have the the capacity to, to even deport them. Is that what's going on? Yeah, th this is a challenge regardless because of the logistics. So many people coming all at once, right? They're doing almost six thousand uh, encounters every twenty four hours, and then you put on top of that the pandemic, where you know we're not supposed to be in crowded facilities. We're not supposed to be jammed up indoors. You know, three, four, five weeks ago, and so yeah, this just makes it harder because of 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 the the COVID, and again. Agents and, and officers, they, they have to be on their post. They have to do this work. And when, when a child comes to the border alone and when an agent encounters them, they have no way to refuse that encounter, right? They've got to take that child into custody and they have to move them through the system so they can get into a shelter. And it's not a great scenario, but when you have people yeah. sick or, and, and the COVID rate much higher in this population, um, it's got to concern them as well. Yeah, you, you said the word is out around the world. I mean, you feel for the border towns and cities and states, 160 nations. We're seeing border crossers from 160 nations trying to cross the border. Your final word, Ron? You got 10 seconds. 
Well, it wasn't like this before, right? They, they took these tools off the table. To your point, Congress could step in and, and fix this fairly dramatically. All right. Ron Vitello, thanks for your service to our country. Thanks for joining us.